So, welcome everybody to the of- official video announcement of MSB GeekCon. Um, a uh, an event that is I'm extremely excited for and also extremely nervous and panicky and uh can't wait. Uh and I uh I love what we've built as a as a group. MSP GeekCon started with a uh an idea forever ago and was urged on by a comment from Ray Orsini to push to make it actually happen. Um, and now we're sitting here with an official event, um, uh, effect, effective, uh, May 21st through the 23rd MSP GeekCon will take place, uh, at the Rosen Plaza hotel, uh, in Orlando, Florida. Um, and I specifically asked Mindy here because he's been our education lead, uh, making sure that we have, um, the, the conference, the, the, uh, overall journey that we want to take everyone on, um, it fits MSP Geek's core values and goals and is something that we can do year after year, hopefully, uh, as long as this event goes well. Um, the sponsors we have uh, is has been amazing. Um, the it, uh, Honestly, the amount of people who have expressed interest in sponsoring and expressed uh, gratitude and thanks for just being involved um, is uh, very heartwarming um, and uh, very appreciated. Uh, and if honestly, if it wasn't for them, this wouldn't happen. So big shout out to all of our sponsors. Um, you can see all about the event uh, at mspgeekcon.com. And one of the things is we wanted to make it cost effective for as many people to attend as possible. Um, there isn't a, uh, at this time, to my knowledge, a uh, technician focused conference um, in the MSP space. And we wanted to fill that need um, to make sure because the core of managed service providers is the technicians um, and they're massively important and they get left out a lot. Uh, and the the core value of MSP Geek as a whole is a raising tide raises all ships, right? And we want to be that tide that raises the ship of managed service providers and targeting a uh, demographic that's not very trained well, um, not their faults, uh, just in the thing that's happening. We want to focus on them and help elevate them. Um uh, the uh, the conference itself, um, where, where the goal isn't to train you how to click a button, type in RegEdit, and open the registry editor. Right, that is not the core focus of the conference. Um, we wanted to we wanted to teach the skills that people utilize on a daily basis that are uh, higher levels inside of managed service providers and other industries, um, and and focus on how they do it, not necessarily clicking buttons and doing this. Um, so on that note, I'll let Mindy take over so that I can have something to drink and he can teach, uh, he, he can educate you guys on uh, what we're trying to do with the education. Kyle basically already gave it all away. Uh, MSP Geek has always been about uh, helping each other, helping everybody, coming coming together as a community. Uh, And like I myself started off as someone who doesn't know what they were doing. Uh, You know, I did, I I was a break fix person. Something was broken, I could figure out how to fix it. But ask me how to automate or script or whatever. And I'd be like, I don't know, that's dev stuff. Leave me alone. To this day, I say I'm not a developer. Totally a developer. Um, which I'm not in any way, shape, or form. Um, and then I joined Lab Tech Geek at the time, uh, now MSP Geek. And the amount of, like, the force multiplier I received from the amount of feedback I got, the pushing I, I got from the community to, like, try this, try that, learn this. And, like, they gave, you know, half answers to push me to do more has significantly pushed my knowledge and skills to the point where, you know, I would consider myself to be DevOps, not developer. <laughs> I don't write anything from scratch, not full stack at all, but I can definitely automate and script things uh, if I need to. Um, so, you know, w- one of the things that we wanted to give back in the conference was one of the pain points that we saw in the community a lot. Like people would come in, there was this lack of fundamentals that exists. There are a lack of fundamentals that exist within organizations. We don't have a, a you know, 
a standard across all tier ones. This is all this is what all tier ones should know. This is what all tier two should know. And one of the problems that we have across the system, whether it's with us working with outside support or whether it's us trying to find a talent to fill in gaps within our industry or whether it's us trying to find a new place is that people come in and go, hey, I'm in tier two tech. And they're not actually really a tier two tech. They're, they were just called a tier two tech at their last job or you know, tier two meant something else to them than what it means to you. So in reality, the way it works is that people who have achieved and I'm not going to say tier or anything, but who have achieved the ability to sit down and figure out any kind of issue, like if they if they are the highest level escalation within the organization and they don't call anybody else or they'll sit down and they'll work through the problem and they'll get it fixed, they tap into skills that are not easily identifiable and not easily quantifiable. And those are the skills that we want to teach. We're not teaching, you know, like... Kyle said, we're not teaching how to open regedit or how to, you know, use process monitor or procmon or anything like that. We're not teaching tools. We're not teaching knowledge of, or content of how to use tools. We're teaching problem solving skills. And that is the core of this conference for year one that we want to try to accomplish. We're looking for our goal is that a tier one technician can come to the conference and walk out two days later having the same skills and abilities as a tier three person. They may not have the same experience to do it as quickly, but they'll know what to do and they'll be able to accomplish it. And the more they do it, the better they'll get at it, which will bring them into that tier three level. I think one of the core things um, that's important is the the core sessions that we're highlighting and, and talking about in this specific instance has been curated. This isn't something that says, hey, uh, do you want to talk at MSP GeekCon? We have went out to individual speakers and say, we're looking for someone on this topic. We're looking to talk about these things in this topic and to have it flow in to the things before and after it. And these, we have approached all of our uh, speakers. Um, we've announced two of them, uh, Aaron Chernin and uh, Kelvin Tuckalar. Oh. Uh, and we, we, we've approached those because we feel they're experts in what we want them to talk about. And they understand that that's the core focus. Okay. Um, so the, like, to give you an idea of what Kyle's talking about in terms of curated, like we sat down and first to start off with me and I wrote it up and then I went to like 15 or 20 other people and I like got feedback and I tweaked and I tweaked and I tweaked and I, then we came up with this thing that we're calling the technical journey. And like I said, I mean, our goal is for a tier one to come in and walk out as tier three, but that doesn't mean we're not targeting tier two, tier three. Like the, the things that we're doing, we're talking about tier two and tier three technicians are already doing them to a level instinctively. And what we're hoping to accomplish is to make them aware of what they're doing so they can do it better and faster and more on demand. So the... Other part about this is that we've layered the sessions in a specific order because they each build as like Lego building blocks. They each build on the previous session. And the keynote session comes first, talking about community. And then the second session, that is the uh, what we're calling the first core session, um, is given by Kelvin, actually, Kelvin Tachliar. Um And it's... It tries to capture the that moment when you're like stuck on a problem and you get the guy next to you to give you a fresh set of eyes. Or, you know, if you're stuck in a game, like a word game, and you need to shuffle the letters because you can't find the word. So what that does is it changes the perspective and gives you like it resets your tunnel vision and gives you a fresh perspective on what's in front of you and then allows you to solve the problem. And it's literally called beginner's mind. That is the first session, second session <laughs> that we're going to be doing uh, as part of the core sessions. And that's going to be talked by Kelvin about the perspective of how do you achieve that beginner's mind, how it's helpful to you, and ways and tips and tricks in order to use it so that you can clearly start fresh when you run into a problem and then properly start troubleshooting it. The third session that we're going to be doing um, is about critical thinking. Like once you're starting from a clean slate, once you have that reset perspective, how do you actually work through a problem, that critical thinking aspect? Um, 
And I'm not going to tell you who's doing that one because they were not announced. But that session will give you the skill to actually start solving the problem once you've approached it with a fresh set of eyes. The fourth session is basically about how do you make sure that the decisions you're making that when you're when you're when you get the problem, you reset your perspective, you start looking working to solve it, you have to start trying things. How do you know that what you start trying isn't going to mess you up? All right. So like it's literally called the, de the defensive mindset. How do you make sure that the things you're about to do are not going to cause a bigger problem? And again, it's all layered on top of each other. Again, this speaker was not announced, so we won't talk about who. The next session is uh, how do you take that problem solving thing that you just did? And how do you take that assessment you just performed to say whether or not it's safe? And then turn it into a repeatable process on abstract. Basically, it's the automation mindset. So it's basically uh, if there's something that can be done faster through automation, you want to you want to stay aware of it. You want to be aware of that so that you can make it make your work more efficient next time. Um, if there's something that you can turn into a repeatable process and then document it for someone to follow next time, you want to be able to do that. So it crosses both developing scripting but also business processes and stuff like that. How do you abstract something and make it an efficient, repeatable process? And that's the automation mindset. The automation mindset, so the reason why it's in this order is because the automation mindset, you don't want to do anything at scale unless you're sure it's not going to mess anything up. So the, def the defensive mindset is used to make sure that what you're about to do is going to work. And how do you extrapolate from a one-time run into a multi-time multi run without causing the world to explode from under you? Like, for example, pushing update all within the unified controller. Like, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and then the next session is the uh, self-motivation. Like, at this point, we get that, you know, imposter syndrome is a real thing. It's something that actually that everyone goes into, including myself, including Kyle. I know everyone gets into that moment of time when it's like, am I really in the right job for this? Am I in the right place? Did I, do I really know what I'm doing? Do I deserve to be here? And am I good that, enough? Am I good enough for the for the place I'm in right now? Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we don't scare anyone out of their jobs. <laughs> we want to make sure that we don't scare anyone out of the room, right? Like it's a lot of scary stuff that we're going to be talking about, you know, automating and defense and paranoia and risk assessments and all these crazy things, beginner's mind. We want to make sure that we're not scaring anyone out of the room or out of the job or out of the industry. And we want them to know like, when you have that feeling, you have to know and keep in mind two things. Number one is that everyone gets that feeling, a hundred percent. If you don't have that feeling, you are not progressing because then you're comfortable where you are and there's no room to grow. So one, identify you having that feeling and understand that it's not an unusual feeling. Number two, take that feeling and use that to motivate you to then learn the things you need to do. So that's why we're focusing on that, that self-motivation and the imposter syndrome, how to use it to empower yourself to learn the role you're in and keep growing. Mental health is super important, especially in this day and age. Um, yes. And we wanted to make sure that we hit that button. And then the last and final session ends with where we started and it goes back to community. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the community is how I grew and I know it's how a lot of other people grew. I get the feedback all the time from all of the members. This is the website. Um, our ticket for early bird is $399. We, uh, we are tech focused. Here's our conference schedule. Um, here is an overview of our event. This is a PDF that you can download and submit. This has got all about the conference, um, all the information. Uh, you have the basic information here. Um, uh, we have an ROI listing. Um, we have some things you can talk to your supervisors about. We have some other documents we're coming up that will be one pagers that you can provide um, your supervisors to make sure that. Uh, I think we have a templated email you can copy and paste. Yeah, and just we send do. It to your supervisor. Um, Is that on the PDF? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's on this PDF, but we have it coming. Um, so it's. Uh, it, it'll be on the website as soon as we get it finished. Um, this is the full agenda. Um, we have our sponsors listed here. They are fantastic. Um, 
we have a couple of pre-days happening. Uh, Huntress is doing a pre-day. OIT is doing a keyboard build. Tier 2 Tickets is doing a pre-day, and so is Roost. These are all free. Um, if you happen to come in on Sunday and you'd like to register those, you can select them when you purchase a ticket. Uh, day one, we have our keynotes. Uh, day two, we're going to provide breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner. Um, and then we go into our full actual break off, uh, breakout of what the actual agenda is. Uh, we're going to have a late lunch on the first day. Um, it's it's packed full in the morning. Um, and then we're going to have lunch with the vendors. You can socialize, hang out, make sure that um, you can stop by their booths, learn about their tools and what they offer. Um, it's super important because they're the ones who help us put this on. Um, and then we have uh, our breakout sessions in the afternoon. Um, you'll be able to select any session you want to go to. Um, if it does fill up, we will have to turn people away. There is a limited seating. I think it's about 100 per um, for at least two of them. Um, but yeah. uh, that is the, uh, they're free to, to come and go as long as they're not full. Um, after that, we'll have a, a dinner hors d'oeuvres thing in uh, the vendor lounge again, uh, where we had lunch. We'll hang out in the vendor uh, hall, have some conversations. Uh, you know, you can still continue to meet up with vendors. You can browse the hall. You can have conversations, set up demos, whatever. And then we go into day two, which we have breakfast. Uh, and then we came back into our course sessions, uh, talking over what Mindy did earlier. Um and then we have lunch at a normal time. And then uh, we have the final breakout sessions for day two. And then we have the MSP Geek After Hours uh, party. Um, to those who haven't been to a conference, generally we like to close out with a fun event. Uh, and we're still working on the details of that. As soon as we have more information, we'll let you know. Uh, but that is the full agenda. Uh, it's a lot packed into a little time frame. Uh, early bird pricing ends February 28th. Get your tickets now. Uh, and then immediately book your hotel room. MSP GeekCon, a conference for MSPs by MSPs, coming May 21st through the 23rd, 2023, in sunny Orlando, Florida. Visit MSPGeekCon.com to find out more and buy your tickets now.